You're watching Inside iOS Dev, your favorite show about real-world iOS development. Hey Alex, I'm facing one problem with my current project. It's an old code base and like every old project, it has a lot of dead code in it. I personally want to remove the dead code, but it's too much that I'm unable to figure out sometimes that what should I remove, what should I keep. And also sometimes it happens that I myself introduce some dead code and later figure out, oh, okay, this was not needed. And this is this, this function called I remove. And I actually introduce some dead code in my project. How can we deal with it? I think that the solution for this is probably, I mean, of course you can be diligent, right? And with, with yourself and your team and try to pay attention to what's deleted. Like in this case, we have this some method three is not used anymore, right? But it's probably better to have a tool, have a machine help you with it. But I also yep. want to enforce it. Like, I just I just don't want to ask the people, hey, we should not add that code. But I think there should be some tool which, ex which actually enforces us, which tells us that you have introduced that code. Yeah. <laughs> so, unfortunately, there isn't something out of the box for this, but we can put something together. So there is a this tool called Periphery that does code analysis, dead code analysis, and can produce a, an output to your terminal showing, well, dead code in your project. So the first thing for us to do is to install it and set it up for our project. So the installation is pretty straightforward. You have various options, Swift Package Manager, Co Cocoa Pods, and so on. But I found it to be the, the easiest, the best is to just install via brew with this command. And then after that, you will have it available in your terminal as a, as a periphery command. And the first thing to do is to call scan setup, dash dash setup. And when you run it, it will, you run it in the root of your project. It will analyze and look at all of your targets available and it will ask you this like a, wizard step-by-step -step walkthrough for configuring your periphery setup. So we'll ask you what targets to analyze. You can uh, all analyze all or pick specific. So normally you probably do want to analyze your dead test code too, but if let's say your test code calls some of your methods in your main project, it it will in that case show that they're there is no dead code in the main project, even though technically nothing but the tests is colon. So in this case, if you have simple typical setup that most of the iOS apps will have of one target or a couple, maybe your main target and a couple of libraries, you just include those and you put, put here the numbers. Then same goes for schemes. You might have multiple schemes. You select your preferred targets scheme. And then a couple of other kind of things to clarify for a periphery. Do you want to assume that things that are exposed to Objective-C are always used? Because for this tool, I believe it's difficult for it to analyze what's used by Objective-C in Swift or something like that. But so recommendation is yes. If something's exposed as a, at Objective-C, assume it's being called. I guess those you could look up manually. And then same for public. So let's say you have frameworks. Uh, do you want to assume that anything a framework exposes as public is used? Uh, again, sometimes for this tool, it's difficult to figure out. Cross library, cross framework, calling of things. So it's up to you how to treat it. I would say yes, because again, assuming if you're breaking down your project and multiple libraries and frameworks at that point, you kind of have a more sophisticated setup and you need to you have to think of think it through more. And then it will ask you to save the configuration or not. So in this case, yes, we want to save it in this periphery YAML file so that next time when we run this tool, it, it's not going to ask you any of this again. So as you can see it already, it ran the periphery scan command. Now, Subsequently, if you want to analyze your code, you can run periphery scan. It will do exactly the same thing. It will build your entire project. 
So right now we have a small sample app. It takes, it's super quick, but in a real world project it might take longer. And then it will give you the output like this. It will tell you specifically what file, in what files and what lines of code, what methods or properties, or even entire classes uh, or structs that are not used uh, in the reference anywhere else. And uh, let's say, for example, if we add some more, as Sandeepio was saying, let's say you refactor something and you removed a method, calling a method, but it, you didn't know, it turns out that this was uh, not called anywhere else anymore. Then you run periphery again, and it will show up in the result as well, saying that now this method is unused too. Great, okay. that's a nice way to deal with like dead code. But now I'm thinking, even if I run this command every time or every time I do some commit, if I run this command, I may end up with thousands of lines saying that this thing is unused, that thing is unused. But I want to make sure that even if I'm not addressing the dead code issue right now, at least I don't introduce any new dead code, right? I, I mean, I just don't want to solve every dead code issue right now because of, you know, we have a time limitation every time we work on a new feature, but I just want to make sure that one thing, at least that if I make myself some code as dead, I immediately get noticed that, okay, you have added some new dead code. At least I just want to fix that. So can I do that? This is actually a great example of like a real world scenario, right? Yeah. As you were saying, the, this output in a real world project will be literally hundreds or thousands of lines of output of unused methods and properties. So it's not really feasible to run it every time. And, you know, you get thousand and two, thousand and one, thousand and second, third line, right? In this, you might not even find it. So out of the box, what there is no nothing in periphery that will help you with that. But what we can do is to put together a little script that will help us with it. So what we have here is what I use in my project is this little Ruby script that will run periphery for you. So run the same command. And uh, you can actually even exclude some files. This is something, let's say some auto-generated files you don't want to be analyzing or whatever else you don't really want to be kind of part of this report, you can exclude. But at the end of the day, this, this script will run and get this output. And then it will sort, filter, strip it out and make it basically a nicer output. And it will write it to a file. And your output file will look like this. It will include all of this output and strip out, remove any messages from periphery that you don't really care about. You, what, what you really care about is the output and we will show it and save it into this file. So why is this important to have it in a file and not actually print it out like this? Well, now, since it's a file and we can place it anywhere in the project director right now it's in the root you can put it somewhere else and then we can check this file in so let's say in that scenario of our legacy large legacy project that has already a lot of un dead unused code that you don't want to undress yet what, what what we would do we would run periphery first time we will produce and then use that script to produce this output on the first run and then we commit it you mean we can track through Git, right? We can yes. just add this file and we can track any addition to this file through Git. Wow, that's a nice thing. And then let's say we introduce a couple of new or one more method unused. We made our changes. Then we run our dead code finder script again and we'll in turn run periphery and then write, change, write a new output to our periphery file. So we commit that output as well. And then after we push and create new pull request for this change, we can see that 
yes, new changes, changes were made to our normal Swift files, but also there was a new dead code method, new method introduced in, uh, as a dead code. Wow. N now I can just, while reviewing the MR or that PR, whatever you say it, so I can just check, okay, some new code has been, dead code has been introduced. And now I can just ask to get it done, get it fixed, right? Yes. That's and, nice. And even better, you can, as a team, strive. Let's say you have a large thousands of lines of dead code in this list, right? You can strive not just to not introduce new dead code, of course, but every time chip away and remove at least one or two. So basically, instead of having this, perhaps each pull request, you could have something like that. Where every time you make your changes, at least you chip away by removing at least like one or two method or dead code method or property. And yeah, that way you can slowly improve your code base and get rid of all of the dead codes. One annoying problem with this is you have to run the script command again, again and again, every time you want to have that analysis and then you get the output file that you commit. So one option to explore is to perhaps add it to your pre-commit hooks or pre-push hooks with Git. It might add to the commit time or push time because your entire project will be compiled with periphery, but it might be a viable option to more automatically get these changes in your pull requests. That's a really good suggestion. But yes, we have to watch for the time it takes to for the periphery to scan. We'll share the script to massage periphery output and write it to a file with you guys in the show notes in the description under the video. This is how you can help find that code uh, in your code base using periphery and a little bit of custom scripting. Subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss the next episode.